Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariongi and uh, today we continue with our topic of discussion and the topic is in Form 3 Biology and we are going to discuss Classification 2. This is a topic that uh, we started earlier and we have proceeded at an advanced stage and uh, today we are going to learn about biological keys. Uh, biological keys are uh, uh, simply identification keys. They are keys that are used by biologists to identify living organisms. So they act as a guide. They act as a guide uh, to help a biologist or a scholar of biology to identify either plants or to identify animals or whichever the organisms uh, that are displayed there. Uh, now, uh, one of such biological keys and the most common one, we call it the dichotomous keys. We call it the dichotomous key. And the word dichotomous comes from the word dichotomy, which means branching into two. So we are going to uh, say that uh, uh, they are identification keys. Biological keys are identification keys that are used by biologists to identify living organisms. And we can say that one of such keys one of such keys or one of the biological keys is the dichotomous key. Dichotomous key. So a dichotomous key is borrowed from the word dichotomy. Dichotomy means branching into two. Branching into two. Uh, so, for example, if you have a, a certain number of organisms, you start by dividing them into two groups based on the differences. So, of course, one group will have something that they have in common and the other group will have something that they have in common. But group A and group B will be showing some differences between them. So that way we have split our organisms into two. And that's why we are saying that dichotomous key uh, or dichotomy is about branching uh, into, into two. Uh, in this case, uh, when we are doing the dichotomous key, uh, we follow uh, a concept whereby we use two contrasting characteristics at every uh, stage. We use two contrasting characteristics at every stage, then we number them. So we are saying that uh, when constructing keys, uh, we use contrasting, contrasting characteristics, that is different characteristics. And then we number them. We number them. E.g., we can have one A and then one B. So one A, maybe we can have a certain characteristic, then we list it there. And then one B, we have a certain characteristic, then we list it there. So if 1A identifies an organism X, then we'll go and say this is organism X. Uh, if characteristic 1B, maybe uh, 1A was wings present, uh, it goes to X. So X is an organism with wings. If we say 1B, uh, 
wings absent or without wings, then it points at Y. So that way we have identified. But it's not in all cases we, where we have only two organisms. We can have a situation whereby the organisms are more than two. So in this case, if we realize the wings present, there are more than one, then we'll say go to two. We'll use another characteristic at step number two. If we realize there are more than one organism without wings, we'll say go to three. We'll use another characteristic to, to distinguish them. So, so we're saying that when more organisms or more than one, when more than one organism shares a particular characteristic, we go to the next step. We go to the next step. So the first thing, uh, uh, that being an introduction to the biological keys, or being an introduction to the dichotomous keys, it is important uh, uh, we come up with the, some of the common features, some of the common features used for identification. So common features used in identification. We can say, for example, uh, we use something like uh, a leaf type, uh, whether it's a simple leaf or is a compound leaf. Uh, we can use maybe a type of leaf venation. Are uh, the veins parallel? Are uh, the veins net veined? So those are some of the common features that we use in identification. We can even use the leaf arrangement. Uh, is it opposite? Is it uh, alternate? Uh, is it hold? So we'll see all those characteristics. But basically, these are some of the common features we use in plants. We shall see others as we move on. But first of all, uh, let's uh, study the rules for constructing a dichotomous key. So before we construct a dichotomous key, it is important to follow some rules. And uh, one of the rules is that uh, we use morphological or observable characteristics. We can only do a, a dichotomous key use by use of morphological or observable characteristics. We cannot use characteristics that we can't see. So like in the examples I've given, the leaf type we can see, whether it's a simple leaf or a compound leaf, there's something that we can see. Leaf venation, how the veins are arranged, is something that we can see. So you're basically saying that we must use morphological uh, characteristics or observable characteristics. Number two, we start with the major characteristics then narrow down to minor characteristics. So for example, a leaf type is more major than the leaf arrangement. We first must know how, what type of the leaf is this before we go to how is it arranged, right? So the leaf type is more major. So we are start, start with the major characteristics, then we narrow down to uh, minor characteristics. Then uh, we construct two contrasting statements 
we con uh, construct two contrasting statements like we mentioned here. Uh, construct two cons contrasting statements. E.g., we are saying that uh, in one A, we are saying wings present. And one B, we can say wings absent. So that is, so for those that are wings present, we are going to have them here. For those that have their wings absent, we are going to put them there. So that's what it means by using contrasting characteristics. Maybe you can say with one pair of antennae, with two pairs of antennae. So basically that. Then we go to the next uh, rule that we follow when we are constructing the dichotomous key. Number four, use identical forms of words. Use identical forms of words. Like here we have said wings present, wings absent. That's a positive, that's an identical form of words. And um, on this, we don't say animal with wings. Huh? or with wings and without wings. No, we use identical form of words. Wings present, wings absent. Antennae present, antennae absent. And as we are doing this, ensure that we use positive statements. Ensure that we use positive statements and if a negative statement can, cannot be avoided, and if uh, a negative statement cannot be avoided, then we should start with the positive statement. So, for example, in the case of wings present and wings absent, of course, we cannot avoid the wings absent because there are those that have the wings and there are those that do not have the wings. So, we are saying that where we have to use the negative statement, we make sure that it comes second. So, the first statement is a positive statement, then the second statement is a, is a negative statement. We'll see how that is applied. And then lastly, rule number five, avoid generalizations or overlapping avoid generalizations or overlapping what does that mean e.g uh, use of maybe you can say one a tall plants one b short plants This is wrong. Generalizing the plants as either tall or short is wrong. What we should do, we should specify how tall is this tall. How tall are these tall plants? Maybe you can say plants that are 1.5 meters and above. And maybe short plants are plants 1.5 meters and below or below 1.5 meters. So that one avoids generalizations, whereby a person may say tall while the other person actually understands that to be short. So it is important that we avoid generalization. So we be specific. So you're saying that we should be specific e.g. 
1a plants 1.5 meters and above height and we can say 1b plants below 1.5 meters height so that is a, a more specific uh, answer rather than just say this is tall or this short because it asks a question how tall is tall or how short is to, uh, short so those are the rules uh, that we apply when we are constructing uh, dichotomous keys so you'll have an assignment on that So the first question in the assignment, what is a dichotomous key? Uh, number two, state five rules observed when constructing dichotomous keys. So we are going to stop there until next time. Goodbye.